Hey artists, I'm Oscar Fernandez, and I have a tool in my hands that I've been dying to try out. The folks at 3D Connection sent me the Space Mouse Enterprise to test it out, and I'll share my honest opinion in the field of digital sculpting. I'm going to give my true and honest opinion. Is it really useful for 3D sculpting? Is it worth it for programs like Cybris, Character, Creator, or Substance Painter? Let's find out. Let's get started. Well, there's not much mystery here. We open the box and, as expected, everything is perfectly protected. We take out the space mouse, and just seeing it gives off a sense of quality. It's super solid, well-built, and has a really professional design. Let's take a closer look. Inside the box, there's just the space mouse itself. There are no manuals or anything, but they're not really needed. Inside, we only find a small guide with the steps to follow. As I said, as soon as you take it out, the first thing that catches your attention is its design. You can tell it's a super premium product with sturdy materials, flawless finishes, and a size that really makes an impression. It has a nice combination of buttons, a high resolution display, and of course, the iconic 3D control in the center. The design is completely ergonomic and made for professionals, so let's keep testing it out. We just have to connect it via USB, but sometimes things can get a bit tricky. Once it's connected, we head over to the 3D Connection website and download the drivers. And here I ran into a little hiccup. It turns out that the latest version of the drivers doesn't play well with my version of Windows, but that's no problem. On the website, we have all the previous versions available, so I downloaded the second to last one and everything was perfect. So, after downloading the drivers, the easiest thing to do is to go through that little mini initial tutorial to learn how the joystick works. Panning up and down, we pull the controller up and down, panning left, right. We slide the controller gently to the left or right to move the view in those directions. Zoom. We push or pull the controller to zoom in or out. Rotation. We turn the controller to the sides to rotate the scene on the vertical axis. Inclination. We tilt the controller forward or backward to move the view on the horizontal axis. Spin. We rotate the controller as if you were turning a steering wheel to tilt the view sideways. And everything combined, we activate all those movements at once for smoother and more natural navigation. And that's all we need to know. That's it. I was super eager to try it out, so... I didn't wait any longer. I opened Character Creator and loaded a model. And we could say that this is where the magic begins. At first, I won't lie to you, it was a bit tough for me. The model kept slipping off the screen. I tried to fix it and ended up sending it even further away, but I realized that in my head I was still thinking in 2D. And this isn't just a regular joystick. It simulates literally holding the figure in your hands. So at that moment, something clicked in my head and everything became completely natural. Of course, after so much camera movement, I have to admit that I ended up feeling dizzy from fear. But after 30 minutes of practice, I felt like I had it down and started to notice how smooth the navigation was. With that under control, let's see how things go when we actually use it for real. Once you get used to navigating with the 3D controller, it's time to roll up your sleeves and start sculpting for real. From the beginning I noticed that it was going to be difficult for me to get used to using the buttons with their default placement. Especially the default keys for Control, Alt and Shift, which did not convince me and I was unable to work fluently. My hands automatically went to look for the commands where they've always been but everything was in a different spot here. So the beginning was a bit chaotic. If there's one thing I'd really like to highlight about the Space Mouse, it's its level of total customization. You can remap buttons, adjust navigation, and configure every detail to perfectly fit your workflow. It doesn't matter what software you use, with a little setup, you can shape it to your liking and make it your own. That means you don't have to change the way you work, Instead, the device adapts to you. Next, I'm going to show you two possible customization solutions I've used to adapt my workflow to this new tool. First, with ZBrush, I'm going to make shape changes manually. I have set Escape to Shift, Tap, to Control and Enter to Alt. This way, my hand placement remains the same and my fingers rest on the keys, allowing me to maintain natural movements without having to worry about changing placement. Now everything flows, just like always, but with more control. So that's the key. 
I think it's all about adjusting the settings to fit our style. Once I got into the world of customization, I couldn't stop. I started tweaking a few buttons early on, and each tweak makes the experience a little bit better. The good thing is that this is just the beginning, because I know I'll keep making more modifications as I use the space mouse and new needs come up. Once we finish customizing the keyboard shortcuts, we can save them to have them always available. And the other system would be just the opposite, that is, using a preset already created to use it without having to do it from scratch. In the case of iClone, for example, the folks at Realision have several presets ready that we just need to download from the website and import from the Space Mouse Settings window. With this, we can start working right away with an optimized setup, although we could still tweak it to our liking. The starting point would be sculpting with a mouse and keyboard. It works, of course it works, but it's uncomfortable and the brush strokes are clumsy and imprecise. Without pressure sensitivity, we spend more time adjusting parameters than actually sculpting. Using a graphics tablet is our first big leap. The pressure of the pencil gives us control over the stroke, making the process more natural and fluid. With a graphics tablet, we draw directly on the image, eliminating the disconnect between the hand and the screen which improves precision and comfort. And now we come to the Space Mouse. While all of the above gadgets improve stroke and control, navigation remains a challenge. Constantly rotating, moving and framing the model with keyboard shortcuts and clicks can break our rhythm a bit. It is something that we can internalize to such an extent that we almost do not even notice it. But with the Space Mouse, the sensation changes completely. It's like you're actually holding the figure in your own hands. You can rotate, zoom, and move the view naturally and effortlessly, which really speeds up and enhances the workflow in an impressive way. The Space Mouse doesn't replace the graphics tablet, but it complements it in a spectacular way. The feeling of having total control over navigation, combined with the smoothness of a good graphics tablet, makes sculpting much more natural and immersive. It's one of those tools you didn't know you needed until you try it. The evolution of the tools we use helps us make the work experience more natural, efficient, and immersive. Using Space Mouse Enterprise can completely eliminate the use of the keyboard and minimize the use of the mouse. By being able to customize its buttons with shortcuts, many repetitive movements are eliminated that, over time, can cause tension in the hands and arms. The result is less fatigue better ergonomics, and less downtime. And studies have shown that its use can lead to up to 28% more productivity. The price of this product can be a deciding factor, but let's do a quick objective analysis on the amortization of our space mouse. In this chart, we can see a representation of the hours needed to amortize the product based on the minimum wage in each country. The hourly rate for a freelancer can vary significantly so you can do a quick calculation to figure out your specific case. On the other hand, we would have greater comfort and ergonomics, more fluidity in navigation, greater immersion and naturalness, and better precision in framing. But this is impossible to quantify. One of the most interesting points about the Space Mouse is that it allows us to unify the way we navigate across all the programs that support it. Usually, each software has its own way of navigating through 3D space, which means it always takes a few minutes to get used to when switching from one program to another. Let's take a look at an example with these three programs, ZBrush, Character Creator, and Substance Painter. With the Space Mouse, all forms of navigation are completely unified, making it so that moving around in each software is always the same, no matter which one you're using. A huge advantage for all of us who use multiple programs in our workflow. After a month working with the Space Mouse Enterprise, I have to say that my perception has changed quite a bit. At first I saw it as a nice navigation system, but more of a luxury than a necessity. Now I consider it a key tool in my daily life. The difference is especially noticeable in those little camera adjustments we make almost without realizing it, which really improve things. The quality of the sculpture and the naturalness of the poses, because you can peek around with total precision to fix those details that otherwise could go unnoticed. Plus, the learning curve is surprisingly fast. Within a few days, it becomes a natural extension of your workflow. And when you go back to a traditional system, 
you feel like something is missing. Whether you work with modeling, DD, digital sculpting, texturing, or animation, Space Mouse not only makes your work more efficient, it's also more comfortable and fluid. If you get the chance to try it, do it, because once you integrate it into your workflow, there's no going back. So is it worth it? Well, if you work daily with 3D software, then definitely yes.